I now have a computer and I have learned how to make templates on Adobe so that they are just PDFs from the beginning, which gives me a better way to make them more accurate and have them just digital from the get-go so I'm not having to draw them out myself, scan them, and then worry about whether or not it looks right for the people that buy them off of my Etsy store. The reason I bring that up is because I was originally going to make a video about how to make this uh, reach magnum. And I've made this one before. I've posted it on my Instagram. I've actually made like two promises so far that I was going to make a tutorial about how to make this pistol. And I almost got around to it. I had made it again. I had recorded all the steps and recorded myself going through it. And I had the template drawn up, but I realized now that I have my computer, I can redo this and make it more accurate and to scale. And I can show you how I go about the process of making a template in Adobe Illustrator. If you've watched any other tutorials from Comedy Cosplay or Punished Props, you know that you can also do this in Inkscape. So keep that in mind that those are very similar programs and you can look up other people's tutorials to see how to do that. But I'm going to walk you through the process of making this Magnum pistol template. You'll be able to see how to make the template if you want to do that. But even if you just want to use my template that I've put on the Etsy store, you will be able to watch me using the same template to create the pistol yourself and how specifically to apply those parts. Because the biggest issue with this template here is that I've always ended up making the template afterwards. I make the templates myself and then I trace it out, scan it and give it to you on my Etsy store. And this way you'll be able to see me using the exact same template that you will have from the get go. So really long intro there just to tell you what I'm gonna be doing, but that way you have an idea and you'll understand why this video is starting out differently. All right, so I am just gonna start by finding images of the Magnum on Google Images. And I'm just going to look for game files or reference images. This one off of the Wikipedia page looks like this will actually basically be the best reference that I can find. And then having, having some 3D models that people have made will also be useful for getting other angles, seeing how these details need to go together. There are a lot of useful reference images on this particular pistol. I think that the most useful one to use for the template itself is going to be this side view. Now, I also need to know what the dimensions of this pistol are. So I'm going to look that up and find out what the size of this thing is so that I can make a specific Adobe Illustrator canvas that is the correct size to fit this image into. All right, so here we go. Length is 26.70 centimeters and I'm not seeing a height. So I just need to make sure that I don't transform that image at all so that I can scale it up to a length of 26.7 centimeters, which means I'm also going to be making the Illustrator canvas in centimeters instead of inches just to make that easier. Although actually, completely ignored the inches right next to the centimeters right there. So 10.5 inches. That, I was gonna say that sounds short, but now that I'm realizing it, that is actually a pretty long pistol. So with all that figured out, I am going to take this information and go over to Illustrator. My brother's practicing clarinet, so you might be hearing that in the background. Actually, since I'm recording with Game Bar, you probably can't see what I'm doing in files. So uh, I'm gonna go up to edit, place, and then I'm going to paste in the reference image. And you can see this is a high enough quality image that it is showing up really big on the screen. So yep, if I just click that and drag, it'll allow me to transform it, which I do not want. So I'm gonna undo that with Control Z. And I'm going to hold, I believe it's Shift. Yeah, and now you see that stays uniform. Let's see, I'm gonna place this right on the corner here and then I'm going to transform this way until my cursor hits 10 and a half. Although even that is not quite correct. So the very end here, we are an eighth of an inch short, the same thing over here, meaning there's 10 and a half, but I want the gun to be 10 and a half. So I'm going to drag it out an extra quarter of an inch. So now the gun itself is 10 and a half inches long. 
And luckily enough, this is a convenient print because since this gun is 10 and a half inches long, uh, letter paper is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, meaning this fits on here with just enough room at the ends to still have a decent amount of edge to not have to worry about running over and using multiple pieces to have to piece together your pattern. All right, so up here at the top, where it says opacity, I'm just gonna drop that down to, I'd prefer to be a little higher than 50 because I feel like that starts to get harder to see. Let's go with 70. So that is my base layer. Now that we've got the opacity dropped down, I'm gonna go over to layers, lock it so that we can't mess with it. And then I'm gonna add a new layer. So now this new layer is where I'm gonna do my outline. And I'm going to do that with the pen tool. I'm going to do no fill, black stroke, and I'm gonna put this at three points. So now that I have that, I am going to take my pen tool and I'm gonna go all the way around the edge of the pistol. And you can see that these smart guides are just clicking my lines into place sometimes, but if you're wanting to get absolutely straight lines within vertical, horizontal, and 45 degrees, hold shift, and it will snap your lines into place. I can't do that on all of these angles because not all of them are straight 45s, but pretty much all of the lines at the top, I am able to do that way. Some of these that are supposed to be rounded angles, rounded edges, uh, I'm not gonna worry about because I'm going to be cutting it out square in the foam anyway, and so I know that once I actually cut it and do all the work to it, I will be smoothing it out and rounding out the edges. So I'm just gonna leave those edges as hard corners. Down here, I'm going to grab and pull, which will round my line out. And then I will simply click on that point again and I go right back to the regular pen tool. For this whole grip, I'm gonna be doing curved lines. Um, I am not that skilled at Adobe Illustrator, so I'm just doing this to show you how I'm making this pattern and how I'm going about it. But if you wanna figure out how to do this yourself and do probably a better job at it, um, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube. YouTube is how I learn basically everything that I do, so which is why I decided to do this. Um, just look for a variety of different tutorials on the Adobe programs and how to use them, and you'll be able to get this all figured out pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of this outline and then show you how I do the detail work. Now that I have my outline in three point, I'm going to create a, another layer. I'm going to also lock this one so that I'm, again, not messing with it. Create a new layer, and this layer I am now going to be working on in one point lines. Actually, I changed my mind. I am going to use two point font, sorry, two point stroke for the solid details around the outside or like solid pieces that are gonna be on the sides of the pistol. And then I will use one point lines for any surface details. So anything I'm gonna be doing like scoring right here on the side or the cross hatching texture on the grip, uh, the lines down here on the magazine base, those will all be in one point. Two point for things over here, like the laser pointer module. That'll be two point, the flashlight trigger and the guard. Those I'm gonna do in two point lines. And then in one point, I am going to do the detail lines like this. Those I'm gonna do in one point. So to demonstrate this right here is a raised edge. So I'm gonna go back to my two point stroke, add a line here. There we go. Hold down shift to get that straight line. And then over here, I am going to run this line all the way across as that is also 
a differentiation between the edges of a solid piece. So I'm just gonna go through that whole thing, figure out where all of the lines of all the different things are, and then if it doesn't communicate well enough, this will this video hopefully will allow you if you're using this template to then see how all of these lines apply and just follow along and see what I'm doing. As you can see, I now have the whole thing completed. I am now going to block my last layer and I am going to bring up the importance of reference images because I have a whole bunch of different lines on here that when I take the image away, as I am going to do now, you can see I'm gonna go over to layer one and I'm gonna to toggle the visibility, now it's gone. So without that reference image or without some sort of 3D reference of some sort, a lot of this picture might not make sense. And so this is why it is important to have reference images so that you can check, make sure you're familiar with how that object sits in 3D space and how you need to work on it. Once you get rid of the uh, picture, this is what you're left with. You have this frame, you have the thick lines for the outline so that you know where to cut. You have mid lines for the edges of the detail pieces and then you have the thin lines for some angles, some detail, scoring work and all of that. Um, some of these details might not even be transferred to the final prop depending on how necessary I feel like that detail is. You can also see I have this gray stripe down the side and that is to be a printable reference for where the paint stripe goes. That way I don't have to worry about the thickness or where it should be positioned. I know based on my pattern where that stripe of paint needs to go and exactly how big it needs to be. Uh, the only thing I then need to figure out there is to what extent it should fade and sort of gradiate up to the top of it. And this is also, if you're making your own patterns, it really just depends on what information you feel like you need. Um, with a pattern paired with a reference image, you may only need half of the detail that I've put down on here you may need twice as much. It is entirely up to you and what you can keep track of. So now that I have this done, I am going to save this file and convert it to a PDF, and then I am going to print it, and I will be able to get started on making a 3D version of this prop out of foam. <laughs> 